Hello and welcome to The Dapper Swede. My name is Johan. Today we are once again going fancy with champagne. And to do this, I brought my good friend and champagne expert, Jonathan Boulanger. Boulanger. Almost. Boulanger. Almost. It almost sounds like baker. It actually probably my family, we had some baker, yeah, probably. But now it became Boulanger, so E A T. It's a oh. tough one. I'm sorry. Uh, well, do you know what? I have a tough one. I couldn't say So, it so yeah, yeah. I know your feeling. <laughs> but you know what? You have been in Champagne like your entire career. I think I, I, I was born uh, yeah, drinking Champagne pretty much. You were born. Is that the French way or is it specific to your family? No. Uh, well, it, it, at, uh, my family, we always had wine, you know, at uh, the table. But uh, I was born and raised in Paris. But I studied in Bordeaux, uh, in a school in Bordeaux. And that's really when I get into the wine. Mm -hmm. um, and then I discovered Champagne after the industry of Champagne. So it's been, I think it's been now 20 years that I've been drinking champagne pretty much every day. <laughs> <laughs> good champagne does the body good, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, it's a fantastic uh, wine. I'm talking about So what wine. is champagne? Alors, champagne is actually uh, two things because it's, uh, first of all, it's a region in yeah. France. Yeah. It's probably, um, it's like 45 minutes from Paris by train. Yeah. So next time when you're in Paris, you take the train. 45 minutes after, you are in Champagne. Yep. Uh, the capital of the regions, it, uh, it's uh, called Reims. Yep. It's a tough one to say too. Reims. Reims, yes. Reims. All the kings from Clovis yeah. were crowned in that city, okay. in that beautiful church, the Cathedral of Reims. We have 33 kings that were crowned in that church, in that cathedral in Reims. So really the, the story of, of the of France were built also part of it in this beautiful city. And actually, the wine of Champagne um, came from the region. Yeah. And to, in order to be called Champagne, you have to be from that region, from Champagne. Perfect. Long story short, but the, 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 the lot of study, the monks at the time, you know, where we, we had a lot of monks that were in the Abbey doing wines. But that comes from actually way before from the Romans. The Gallo Romans used to plant vineyards. But the monks really master the wine of Champagne. And of course, the bubbles came actually by accident. So it's not just a white wine carbonated? No, that's actually a, a, the good difference between also uh, the sparkling wines. We probably yeah. No, the bubbles in, in Champagne are made naturally uh, by the yeast, mm -hmm. actually that ferment with sugar and create those, that CO2 mm -hmm. that creates bubbles. But no, it's not, it's completely natural. Um, and, it, it, and it was actually, it happened as, a, as an accident, as I said. Uh, and a lot of monks, among them Dom Perignon, the monk of Dom Perignon, master the, what we call the second fermentation, uh, mm -hmm. the fermentation in the bottles. But it's actually a series of, of accidents, of people, of, you had, believe it or not, Johan, but one of a, 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 a British scientist, British, and it's difficult British. for me to say that. Oh, um, oh. Actually, master very well the, f the the second fermentation of champagne. Oh wow! So we could say that the British had a part of it also, but it's still French, huh? It's French, of course, yes. of course, it's French. Bien sûr, bien sûr. Bien sûr. Um, so, what is the difference between champagne and sparkling wine? Right. So, well, champagne is 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 uh, is in the category of sparkling wine, if I may. Mm -hmm. but sparkling wines is the is the category. So, in that you have. Cava, uh, Prosecco, you have uh, in California uh, sparkling wines, but you cannot call it Champagne. Yeah. Champagne has that uh, uh, great uh, appellation, we call it Appellation d'origine contrôlée. So, as I said, we, you have to be from Champagne, the grapes are, uh, need it to be from a, there. It's a controlled certification Absolutely. to be called Champagne. Yes, it's really protected. Yeah. Um, so now all the viewers, you are mm -hmm. uh, advocates of champagne. Of course. We have to protect this appellation. I just say that I am very bothered when I see something be called California champagne. Well, we really think of champagne for like celebration, yes. things that are very important in our life, things that happen where we want to recognize it as being important, when we bring people together, when we want to really show them that we care. So when we put in a lot of effort with food, like it, it is always that champagne is part of the 
the signifier to make something really feel special. Absolutely. But you said it, Johan, it's not just a wine for celebration. It is far and foremost a wine. So the best way to enjoy champagne is actually with food. Yeah. So, uh, I remember as a kid, you know, my, when we had, we'd started in a, the aperitif, we call it in, in France, yeah. before dinner, you have a bottle of champagne with some, you know, passeur d'oeuvre. But then I remember my mother, when she was in a great mood, she said, let's continue in champagne. So we had champagne dinner, champagne lunch. And this is what, what I like to do now. It's to pair different kind of champagne with different type of, kind of meals and food. Yeah. What kind of food do you think naturally lend itself to be served with champagne? Well, the good thing with champagne, it goes pretty much with everything chocolate as well so I would say everything will go because I could see a light appetizer being very easy I think a salad with champagne I think like strawberries fruits caviar uh, I know you did oh, a caviar video. yes you of did a course video with caviar that's caviar. probably one of the best pairing the beauty with champagne is that you have a lot of freshness a lot of minerality yeah that comes from the terroir and the terroir is the soil that we have in champagne so the, the we don't we don't like the word acidity in, in, in champagne we talk a bit more about minerality and, and that minerality clean your palate you know it's pretty much like ginger for the mm -hmm. japanese you know when you do the omakase yeah the japanese chef give you a little bit of, of ginger you know to uh, clean, to your, clean palate. your palate it's pretty yeah. much the same idea with champagne of course the bubbles also help to bring you some party in your mouth <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. And acidity is not a word you really want to associate with champagne. What are some of the words that you would say describe champagne or good champagne? Yeah, a lot. We, we, we like to call minerality the, 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 the mineral. The, the, so that's what we like to call that. You know, when you drink and you have in your end of the of, the, of your mouth that, that yeah, little, a little dryness. That, yeah, that's my mother used to have two sayings about champagne. One was Champagne should be as dry as a dusty road. That was when she was like more politically correct. And the second she said was, um, a champagne should be so dry it gives you a facelift. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. But um, we, we say in French that it takes your ears down. So it's pretty okay. much the same concept. Actually, I do like those wine, even in, in, in still wines, when you have that feeling. As when you have an aperitif, yeah. when you start your first wine with this, then you can go with something more criminous. In Champagne, it's very uh, it's a rich appellation because you have that, what your mother said, this, this dryness, very mm -hmm. dry. You have even zero dosage, right? it's uh, zero grams of sugar. So you have that quite freshness, it's very precise. But you can go also to more sweet, you have brut, yeah. and then you go to demi sec. And what do you think of um, our only good champagnes super dry or are there good champagnes that are also uh, have a little bit more sweetness to them even if uh, they're not fully sweet so i i would say it depends of of the the, the moment you enjoy it the, the if you eat or not yeah um the temperature of where okay. you enjoy it you know this is beautiful here you and i think now what i need is more like a drier champagne you know because i I'm because we're sitting in my backyard, backyard and like... Uh, uh, beautiful weather today in LA, finally. <laughs> uh, but um, if you are really thirsty, you know, you want something thin, don't, not too sweet. So you, I will do a, a lower dosage. But then if we bring some caviar, and, you know, I will go a bit more complexity with more creaminess. So complexity is another term? Complexity in champagne, uh, in wine in general, but in champagne, definitely. Uh, we, and well, how would you define complexity? So the complexity is really um, when you have... Um, uh, Several notes of uh, flavors? Yes, so on, on, uh, f first, of course, in the eyes, you can see if the champagne first is old or not, just by looking at the color. Because the, the, usually the darkest you'll see on the color, some rub you'll see, you'll see that the champagne has aged or not. Then when you have it on your mouth, the, 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 the texture, the silkiness, you know, give you also indication if it's more Chardonnay, more Pinot Noir or Pinot Meunier, because, you know, we have three grapes in Champagne only that we can blend together. Okay. Um, so the complexity is actually a whole of, of what you feel, what you see, it, it reveals all your sense at the end. So are all Champagnes blended in some way between the different grapes or right. are there single source as well? So, yeah, you're right. Some, some Champagne can do only Chardonnay, that's what we call Blanc de Blanc, so yeah. they only source Chardonnay. It can be Blanc de Noir, which is only Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier, because those two grapes are red grapes. Uh, most of the Champagne are blending those three together. 
um, and what we call in Shami is the art of blending. Okay. And the seller master are the one who can blend all those grapes together. What is then rosé? Uh, rosé champagne is actually a, a very difficult uh, um, type of champagne that we do in champagne. We, we have different ways, two ways to do it. Okay. We have the first one is called the, the rosé de saigné. So the saigné um, is referring to uh, blood, you know, because when you look at the grapes, I was yeah. talking about the, the Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier and Chardonnay. Um, if, you, if you take actually um, the grapes, let's say the Pinot Noir, you know, the, the skin is actually uh, dark. Yeah. But if you press in your hands the grape, yeah. the juice is going to be light. Yeah. But the more you're going to press the skin, the more color you're going to get out of, of, of that skin. So it's very difficult. Um, to have a, a consistent rosé with that method because imagine if you press a little bit too much yeah. the wine is red so you want something light so it's a diffi difficult would method. you say that that changes the flavor completely yes yeah. you have something more what we call vineux more wine um, the oh. second method the, the blending so you, you add still pinot noir like a, a red wine yeah you know? it has to come from champagne yeah again and it brings that that color into the wine and of course, it's going to give you some, uh, some, some complexity again in yeah. the aroma. Would you serve rosé champagne differently than you would just uh, regular champagne? I, I like personally, but that's a question of taste. I like to pair champagne rosé with meat. Okay. You know, like duck, um, lamb. It's very also interesting to pair rosé with Asian food. Uh, it goes really well because you know it clean all the spices that you can get from, from Asian food. You can have a champagne rosé whenever you want and the aperitif without nothing, you know? Um, yeah, well that's how a lot of people think of rosé. Yes. They think of summertime. They... You're right, a lot of people don't know yet that actually champagne rosé is a great wine to pair with food. Um, well, I love duck, so that would be a good duck, pairing. Duck for me, it's, you know, there's a place in Paris, it's called La Tour d'Argent. Uh, they are famous to do a, a duck. You know, and, and one of the best pairing that known is to have champagne rosé with, with your duck. I will go there next time I go yes, to Paris. Yes, <laughs> let's go together. Okay, about that. let's go together. I know you're going for a month next yes, week. Yes, yes. So, um, how would you describe this champagne so, versus this champagne? Wait, the, the, um, I like to compare champagne with fashion. I mean, you know you like fashion too. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in fashion, you have the, the pret-a-porter, it's called the, mm -hmm. the ready, ready to wear. Ready to wear. Mm -hmm. The ready to wear will be a brut, not yeah. vintage. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much 90% of the consumption today. People are drinking non-vintage. So it means non-vintage is actually not correct. We should say multi-vintages because it's actually a blend from different vintages. So vintages means years. Yes, yes. Okay. So champagne is the only appellation in the world who can actually keep the harvest and use it the years after and blend different harvests together. Okay. The goal for that is for, to get to maintain the same style every year. Okay. You know, the yeah. cellar master are the guardian of a style of each shopping house and those reserve wines, what we keep, the, what we call the reserve wines are actually the, the pack harvest. So that is because the different years will have a different identity. So when they blend together yeah. several, they kind of smooth out those differences exactly and right. when you drink like a champagne a piper then you know kind of what you to expect roughly. exactly every year you will have the same taste when you drink piper if you are in, in la or in Japan, tokyo in paris you will maintain the state and every year is going to be the same and that's how people know each brand because they like their style and you yeah. maintain the state however in fashion you have Haute couture. Haute couture, I yes, haute the, couture. I do. So that, uh, would, so be that the, would be this. That would be this, an example of a haute couture champagne. So that would be a vintage. That would be more than a, it would be a vintage and we call it also a prestige cuvée. So it becomes a whole nother category. It's vintage, you're right. So it's, uh, it's a picture of one year in champagne. Okay. This one is 2008. So when, um, when James Bond says he wants um, a specific year, that is because he wants a vintage. I just want the drink only vintage champagne. Yeah. Yes, uh, he like prestige cuvee. He's more haute couture, you know. Okay. <laughs> yes. I, I agree. But but uh, I mean. So this here is a 2008. Eight. Yes. So would you say that 2008 was a specific 
good year? Oh yes, it was a, a, a fantastic year. It's probably one of the best champagne of the century yet. We'll see what happens next, but this is clearly something that will stay in the history of champagne as one of the masterpiece in champagne. champagne. At 2002, which was also uh, uh, outstanding, and I will say just after 2008. Um, those two vintages are amazing because vineyards has to be stressed, you know. Okay. So the, 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 Climate needs to be a, a little bit challenging, but not too much. So you need a good summer, uh, a winter, you know, but cold, but you, you don't want frost, you know, you don't want a mildew, you don't want disease. So it was a very healthy year, but everything was high. You had a heat uh, in summer, cold winter. So you have high acidity and high creaminess. So it's okay. a blend of everything. And, and 08 is full of minerality. Again. Mm -hmm. And the minerality is a, is a, a god guardians. To, uh, guardians of the galaxy. The guardians <laughs> of time. That's gonna age a lot. Okay. That bottle is 40 years old, but it can age easily 50 more years. Easily. Oh, so I should really keep this for you a while. You can keep it for a while. <laughs> so this is a prestige cuvee because this is the best plot, the best vineyards, the best grapes um, from that year. Okay. So it gives another dimension of, of the quality. You know, so not all champagne vineyards would have that. No, alors usually the prestige cuvées are created by uh, what we call the big houses. Yeah. Or probably, uh, probably say 10, 15 houses, and, and they have those prestige cuvées. They have the flagship and then the prestige cuvée. It's like fashion too, you know. You have yeah. you know the prêt à porter, and then you go up to. Yeah, to and not picture. all fashion houses have haute couture. Exactly. Yeah. It's exactly that. But uh, in Champagne, everybody do non vintage. Everybody do prêt à porter at least. Yeah. yeah. So let's move into glasses. The glasses. Because that's a good. I. I have here collected some different classes. Yes. So we have classic flutes, Correct. which I think most people would think of when they think of champagne. Yes. Then I have brought out coupes, which are very, very different. Mm -hmm. Then we have here a tulip glass, tulip, yeah, which tulip. is somewhere in between. Correct, yeah. And then this is completely left wing that uh, you made me bring out. Uh, but these are, I would say, the three classic glasses. So what would you say well, about these? What I would say th th those are um, linked to, again, some history, um, anecdote and... Yes. So it says that the coupe was actually shaped after right. the bosom of Marie Antoinette. Yeah. Now. We were not there, so we... We were not there, and there are many stories about Marie Antoinette that I'm yes. not really she, like... She was... No, we had recorded that she was a big fan of Champagne, and she clearly made the success of Champagne happen okay. in the world, because she was a big fan. We say that she has a bath in Champagne. We had some record, actually, uh, precise that she had actually said that the Champagne was good for her skin. So she bathed in that's Champagne. That's why that's some, some said record, but she clearly had a lot of champagne. She was a big uh, client of Piper Heitzig, for instance, you know, uh, the founder of Florence Swiss Heitzig, who uh, we have recalled with him going to Versailles yeah. with, to the queen of a special bottle that yeah. actually uh, the tribute of that bottle comes from that encounter with Marie Antoinette. But th th that shape is really, uh, um, it, it gives, as you said, a, a symbol to champagne, a glamour, uh, it's festive when you see mm -hmm. that, you, you already see the face of, I mean, I see uh, uh, DiCaprio in uh, Great Gatsby, you know? Yeah, you the Roaring that? Twenties made these really, really big. It's really the twisty, yeah. But I have understood that these aren't really the best for no. the serving the champagne. Not at all. They might be fun, they might be glamorous, but they're not the best. Not at all, uh, exactly. Why? Because simply because the, the when when you have a coupe like that, uh, the, the bubbles going to go away right away. Yeah. Um, and even, you know, you cannot really smell in a glass like this. Yeah. Uh, it's really wide. You, again, it's beautiful, huh? but um, in order to enjoy s such a prestige cuvee, I wouldn't go with this. Yeah, no. okay. But, um, so yeah. we'll move that out of the way. Then flutes would be the, the next thing that yes. people would know about. The flute is um, a good way to keep the bubbles yeah. in the glass well. The smaller the diameter of the opening, yeah. the less the, the bubbles can escape. Absolutely, yes. Um, the, the only issue here is that the, the, the aromas or the flavors, the perfume that you're going to get, the bouquet, uh, won't, won't show up uh, pretty well on this glassware. 
Yeah, so it will not really like no. uh, I'll give you that experience in the nose. Yes, and when you know you cannot really uh, turn your glasses in order to let the because the wine is uh, is a wine of champagne, so you need yeah. to breathe pretty much like when you decant your wine, your red wine is the same thing. Yeah. You need air oxygen. This is great for the bubbles, but not as great for the bouquet. So yes, here with the tulip. What do you think about a tulip? Glass? It's it's in, in good in between. It's a good way because you have uh, uh, the bubbles that stay here. You are able to turn your glasses, you know, at, at levels so the aromas can can show up. So this is on the three the the, the best the best one to use. Mm -hmm. However, it's not the the best one of all, as I told you before. Yes, I know because the funny thing is I put out all three champagne glasses that I have and he made me go and get a regular a white, white wine glass. Yes, this is what you need. Uh, Simple as that. Wow. Um, this is actually, a, I love those ones, those are my favorite one because you see uh, there's a line yeah. here so it's perfect to keep the concentration of the aromas and it's very easy to turn your glass, you have a long steam so you can take your glass. You never ever take your no, this one is no, 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 no. Uh, the wine is always like, hold your glass well, by the stem. Exactly, that's so, the whole point. So with a long stem like that, it's pretty easier, uh, flexible, you know, comfortable to turn your glass. You can easily smell uh, uh, inside. Um, so yeah, that that would be the uh, one of the perfect glass. Okay, so um, I don't even need all of my champagne glasses for your Gatsby party. For my Gatsby party. Well, yeah. don't tell Chris. He always wants to simplify it, <laughs> and uh, if he thinks I don't need half my glasses, then okay, I'm in those trouble. are beautiful glassware. You can sometimes even decant champagne. Never heard so of that. You have a special decanter, so it's the same idea to make the wine breathe. You're gonna lose the bubbles quickly, huh? of yeah. course. But when you look into the aromas, it's actually an interesting uh, operation to do. Wow. So what is the connection to Marie Antoinette Alors, with this? Marie Antoinette in 1785 was in Versailles, you know, Chateau Versailles. And uh, she had a lot of courtisans. Mm -hmm. Francois Heidsick was a French owner of a, of a winery in Champagne. And he came to Versailles with a special bottle to, to the Queen of France. And he said that sentence, I created a, a cuvee, cuvee means a, a soul of champagne, worthy of a queen. Philippe Pipatic was the, the champagne of the queen. Okay. Uh, and Versailles for, for, for years. And that prestige cuvee came out through that encounter with the queen of France. So that bottle is actually not a replica of that bottle, but it, um, it's actually a, actually a crown. I yeah. know, it's yeah. like a tiara. It's a tiara. That when you can you, take off. You can take it off the end when you drink it. I've been to several parties with you when that tiara has ended up on people's heads at the yeah, end of the it's, night. It's usually a great party, yeah, when you do that. <laughs> yes, when you have a lot of champagne. But uh, uh, when you look at it, actually, yeah. it's a vineyard and it, it, it symbolizes the, the, the difficulty of, of the vineyards, the vines, you know, the struggle of Mother Nature can mm -hmm. make beauty yeah. uh, in champagne. And the, the gold symbolize the Chardonnay and the black of the glass is the Pinot Noir because you have 70% of Chardonnay here and 30% of Pinot Noir only from 2008 wow. harvest. Yeah. This is a fantastic champagne uh, that you're gonna keep for years or you can drink it whenever you want but this is for you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you Jonathan. I have learned so much and I thought I knew about champagne but do you know what? didn't know half of these things. So thank you so much. We will need a full life huh, to, to know champagne and a lot of bottles to open and a lot of uh, YouTube video with you, uh, Johan, but I hope uh, yeah, people um, will discover this amazing wine and come to that region, uh, which is a UNESCO uh, legacy. Huh? You can yeah. go, you can visit what we call the Crayer, it's the cellars mm -hmm. inside the champagne. And actually I invite you, Johan, I don't think you've been. I have not been with you, no. Ah, but you've been to Champagne. I've been to Champagne, okay. but I haven't been there specifically for like Champagne tasting. It was just visiting the region. The, the Crayer is something really unusual to see in your lifetime. I think that is a lovely way to end it. So beautiful. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Joel. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Et we meet in Champagne next time. Hein? Of course, of course. You're heading there next week. Yes, next week. But any time in, in the year, it's a good time to go to Champagne. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I prefer summer, but winter is also interesting to, to go. Yeah.
let's keep it. I would be open to it anytime. So you're welcome. Thank Every you. Every time you. you come, you will be our guest. Thank you. And until next time, bye.